What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Love and Rice podcast with your host, Aunt Ma. I'm Christina Ma. And today we have a very special guest that I think you guys all know. Uh, we have Kelly Me Lee here from Netflix's Blink Empire. Thank you, Kelly, for being here. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm excited for this episode. I'm scared for this episode. Why? Oh, no. <laughs> because I feel you ask people questions. I'm like, oh, what kind of questions do people or people want to know? But we'll, we'll roll with it. But don't you do a lot of interviews and a lot of podcasts? I do, and every single one have always surprised me. Really? Uh -oh. But it's okay. okay. I like it. Well, <laughs> on this podcast, we get to get a little more personal. It's a more casual right we're just it's just me and christina yeah you know um so we're gonna i actually want to get to know a lot about you and before bling empire okay um so i want to talk about that and how even netflix and bling empire found you uh, or discovered you to, to be on the show uh, but before we get to that um, i just want to know who were you before bling empire and what did you do uh, I, I think it's hard to describe myself, but I think I'm a serial entrepreneur. That's, you know, kind of like you guys. I will have my hands in everything. I uh, also produce TV and film, uh, but mostly scripted stuff. Um, yeah. That was, so you were a, a producer? Yeah. I was a producer, a TV and film producer, okay. uh, but mostly on scripted projects. Was that for like a big company or? I had my own company. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. And how did you even get to that? So I used to run a talent management company called East West Artist, um, which is a, a HTC portfolio company. And we manage some of the biggest talents in Asia in the U.S. market. And we had a partnership with a big talent agency out here. Yeah. And we uh, managed all their clients exclu exclusively out in Asia. So because of that, I was able to be in the entertainment industry. And I had really great friends uh, and mentors in the industry that guided me. And I was very lucky enough that I was able to start my production company myself. Nice. That sounds so huge and so like a big jump into, you know, your own company. And I don't think a normal person can just do that. You have to start somewhere. And like, what made you even get into that? What did you do before that? I, I think for me, though, it's always been like, I've always been an entrepreneur because I, I, I worked the corporate world when I yeah. was like in my late teens, early 20s, which is a really, really great experience because you learn structure. What was right. the job? So I used to uh, work for New York Life. Nice. Yeah. And okay. then also I was in, I was in, I worked for New York Life when I was 18 years old. So as soon as I was legally able to get my, license i went and got my insurance license and that was really fun because it kind of teaches you like you know you have to you have to make it happen you know like with with insurance you have to pick up the call pick up the phone cold call and yeah. be able to talk to anybody that's life insurance that's right? life insurance right so that is was, ours is ours new york life I don't remember. It might be. It could be. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it could be. Which is so horrible. Yeah, a lot of people hit us up for that, but that that's a that's a really good start for um I guess how people when when they're trying to hustle, it's always mm -hmm. that sales. Yeah. You know? And that's kind of where it takes you to the next level. Yeah. It takes a lot of self discipline, you know. Right. Yeah. Um, that and then uh, afterwards, I was uh, I worked for a development group, and we opened a bunch of uh, restaurants. Uh, I'm sorry, hotels. So I ran all the food and beverage outlets and hotels, oh, so wow. restaurants, nightclubs, hotel bars, room service, all that stuff. So that really kind of taught me structure because you know the corporate world is very like there's a lot of rules. Yeah. You yes. Know, and Tell me about how it. that works. Like, <laughs> if there's a problem, you can't talk to this certain person. You got to go through a certain channel. Um, and uh, you know, but also like writing all the manuals um, for different food and beverage outlets just because it's a new development group. Yeah. So that really taught me a lot. And um, but, you know, just my nature, I'm not a I'm not a corporate person. I like to do my own thing. It just it's just it's better for me if it's me better. You know, like I can work 24 seven, you know, seven days yeah. a week. I'm mean, sorry. I can work 24 seven. That's <laughs> you know, like, 24 seven days a week. As much as you can. Yeah. 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 I can work, you know, but I know that I'm working for myself. Yeah. You right. Know, the, rather than someone the else. The risk is higher, but also the reward is higher as well. It's more fulfilling. What yeah. I know as being an entrepreneur is that you actually work way more than the corporate world. For sure. World. That's it's true. It's not nine to five. For sure. But, yeah. you know, you can always take time off, be like, okay, I'll just do it later. Mm -hmm. But it sucks because that takes away your time at night. As mm -hmm. if you were doing the nine to five and you have your night to spend with, you know, your significant your significant other. Um, that's something that, that you have trouble with right yeah well because um going back to like corporate life too i was actually an hr manager mm -hmm. so when you're talking about writing manuals and doing everything by the book and having to like follow certain rules right, right? like it's just you have to do everything 
within like a certain schedule you can't go past like 5 30 at night mm. um compared to like now so i'm kind of i'm not i'm still adjusting to that even though you know i've kind of been in that entrepreneur life like how long have you been years? doing youtube now um how long has it been six or seven years and you're still not used to it <laughs> i know but when we started it i was still in the corporate world so yeah. i would be doing my full-time work there and then trying to like juggle youtube mm -hmm. and trying to do other things and be an independent contractor so it was kind of like i don't know it was just an so, adjustment period it's not easy guys being uh, an entrepreneur but it, that's why I'm, like i'm asking you about what you did before because i'm trying to find a connection between what you just told me and how you started your own company into this production stuff and it's like it's totally opposites of the spectrum you know but yeah. I, I feel like because you seem like such a social person and then it kind of opened the gates for you to be able to socialize with other people having to make those cold calls so it kind of just like I don't know if it brought you out of your shell necessarily for sure. but I think naturally I'm an introvert oh like, really I, I'm naturally an introvert so but I think yeah like like you said but I can turn it on if I need to and I but like for me I rather I enjoy like I, I enjoy like individual conversations like this instead of like big parties. I yeah. enjoy like getting to know, you know, each individual person instead of like just kind of the surface small talk. But that's me. But, you know, sometimes it requires you to have a lot of small talks when you're at big events. That's true. That's true. So now you started your production company, right? And you are uh, actually, I don't even know what you're doing with this production company. If you can explain a little bit, because I'm trying to figure out how you even got to Bling Empire. Yeah. So. Um, so the um, well, Blue Empire was a project I put together and I pitched. Oh, um, you started and, it. Yeah. So nice. um, okay. I uh, wasn't supposed to be on the show because I'm very comfortable behind the camera. Yeah. And that's how we're. That's like my happy place. You know, um, more running logistics and behind the camera and produce. Um, but when we put the project, when I pitched a project, when when I was pitching a project. Um, you know, the other producer as well as the network is like, you know, these are your friends. It doesn't make sense if you're not in it. And I've been working on this project for a long time and it's a lot of hard work. And for me, I, I was like, hey, if I have to be on it and, you know, and we'll make this project happen. You know, let's do it. So that's how it works. Because I'm like, how does everyone get on these shows? When you're on a reality show, mm -hmm. people have to audition and stuff like that. For you, you created the show, which is awesome. And all these people that you knew, your friends, uh, the cast members, mm -hmm. how long did you know them before the show? Um, so I've known Kane probably like over 10 years now, as soon as he, uh, he moved here from, uh, Singapore to LA, I, I've, I've met him. So I've known Kane for a long time. Uh, Christine, I've known for longer than Kane, but Christine and I have always been just like social friends. Oh, okay. Uh, we were, uh, we, we sat on the same board in a nonprofit. So oh, that's wow. how we knew each other, but we were never like close. Um, and, uh, you know, and the rest of it, like Kevin, we only met about, a year before the show started because we we're looking for somebody that's like you know we we're looking for a good looking single yeah, <laughs> yeah. there's always got, he's a guy that takes off his shirt oh yeah, uh -oh. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's that guy <laughs> oh, no. so you know um yeah so that's how like you know kind of kind of how the cast came together i think it's pretty dope that you um have all your friends that you wanted to put together on a show it's almost like the mentality of well, I mean, you're hustling and that mentality is like, if I eat, you eat, right? Mm. You bring your friends together and everyone kind of just grows together. Mm. And so with this show uh, that got so popular, like she was watching this all the time. Yep, you know? I was. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so when I would be done with my work, I'd be like, oh, what are you watching? And I got caught onto it too. And I really loved it. And um, what can you say about the show that I'm sure has changed your life, you mm. know, um, what about the show? What part in the show, or I guess when I hear a lot of interviews that you do, you talk about how you're able to uh, spread awareness on certain things mm -hmm. that you can share a lot of stuff like that. What is one story that you really loved sharing on the show? Oh, one story I really love. I, you know, I, I love the storyline with my mom, you know, just because I think a lot of people, well, first of all, I think a lot of people can relate to it, not just Asians, you know? Yeah. Um, and that was really raw and real for me. Um, and, you know, because of it, I think we, I, I actually, I know that we got closer and, uh, you know, and we're able to build a business together and build a friendship, which is really weird to say because, you know, it's my mom. I've known yeah. her yeah. whole life, but I really didn't have a friendship with her. Why did you think that the show brought you guys together? Um, you know, I think the sh you know with the with the reality show, it's how you make it. I think for us that we 
the camera kind of pushes us to deal with problems that we might maybe bury, right? Just avoided. So, exactly. So I think, you know, obviously uh, me pushing to speak to my mom about how I really feel and um, that was really powerful for me. And also the second thing, obviously, is going to therapy. Right. Uh, I just didn't know therapy was a thing, really. Um, so, you know, my first therapy session was on television when they filmed. Oh, wow. So I, because of that, I was able to like, I mean, the whole, this whole world opened up to me for mental health and I'm such a big advocate for it because it's helped yeah. me so much. Was therapy um, the producer's ideas or was that something that you decided that you wanted to do on your own? Um, I think the producers were like, hey, you know, like do a therapy session. I was like, yeah, let's do it. Because at that point it was really like, let's just try anything. I'm, yeah. I'm open to try anything. Do you well, think was- if it were off camera and it was like in your own like personal life, would you have done it? Probably not, just because I feel like there was nobody to push me. And, Got it. You know, yeah, I probably would have been like, okay, cool, sure, I will. But I don't think I'll make the call and look for a therapist because that's a whole process, you know, finding the right person, all that stuff. Being in the Asian culture, you're not even ever thinking about like, I need therapy, mm-hmm. you know? We don't so. talk about mental health. We don't not talk at about all. Any of that stuff. Yeah. You, you know? don't talk so, about feelings. Yeah. So I think like nowadays, you know, we, we, we you know what we're taught is that if we feel certain, we just bury it and keep working. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And um, I think nowadays, I think there's more and more people talking about it, and I think awareness is so important. Um, and you know, mental health is a thing, and this it doesn't mean that something's thing. wrong with you. It just means yeah. your mental well being, right? And it's, it's important. It's your physical well being. Yeah. No. What I learned about is that you find the roots of the issues, and mm. when you fix it, you become a better person. Yeah. You know, and if you don't ever fix them, it's like you just always have these bad things in you. And it's just it doesn't ruin your life, but it doesn't unlock your fullest potential. And so you get it cleared out for sure. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah, because we started doing that stuff, too. And I think it was very, very helpful. Yeah, because I think when we um, had kids like we were kind of trying, I guess we were putting our relationship on the back burner and then we're focusing on the kids so much. And then after a while, we just started having all these conflicts because when you become a new parent, yeah. like you have this like different parenting lifestyles of and course. everyone just has like a lot of disagreements on things. But, yeah. um, you know, I think taking that first step to take to go see a therapist yeah. that actually helped us a lot because, you know, I, I got a question. Yes. Uh, so when we, when we were going to therapy, the root of the problems were coming from our parents the way we were treated, yeah right? yes. so it always goes back to childhood trauma as, was that your first therapy session was because your uh things with your mom everything kind of goes back you know with your parents with yeah. your mom your dad and you know all the how you're brought up 100 percent. yeah and that's when i i mean that's for sure one of the reasons that that like pushed me to you know speak to my mom and you know take the first step to get to know her better and you know want to building her wanting to build a better relationship with her i might have missed this on the show do you remember any of this part this was season three. Do you have a season three? Yeah, this is season three. We filmed in San Francisco. And uh, me and her, we had a conversation at the at the San Francisco Zoo. And that was actually the trip I met my current partner. Oh. Nice. Okay. We got busy after season one. That's okay. <laughs> because season, Didn't we watch two? Two you can pretty much skip, I feel like. Two is like, eh. I don't know. It's not my favorite season, but... Three's got kind of got better again because I think for me, like, you know, one of the things I, I really love about Bling is that, yes, there's the glam, there's the fashion, there's the yeah. fun right. parties, but it really is about the storylines. I think mm-hmm. like that everybody can relate to. We talk about real life problems. Yeah. Right? And I think two just didn't really have that. Okay. You know? Were you in season two? A yeah. lot? Okay. Yeah. I, I, I was just pretty much in everyone's drama and I'm just like in the background like oh this is so dumb. Yeah. I felt like you were the, the neutral one and you're the chill one. Like the drama wasn't fully like on you yeah. so <laughs> but i mean even season one i really wasn't in a lot of people's drama i'm i'm oh. i'm you know i take care of my own my i'm just focused on my own life like i got season one you had a lot of drama that i yeah, saw that's but my true. own drama yeah, exactly own drama. Yeah, you didn't really bring it to to the whole crew yeah i didn't really i wasn't in their dramas yeah, <laughs> yeah. okay I know you said you were working on Bling Empire for a long time and the concept of it and the idea behind it. Like, what inspired you to even think of that? So the book Crazy Rich Asians, you know, oh, okay. obviously give credit to, um, you know, to the book. Uh, when I read the book, I was like, these are like fictional versions of my friends, you know, and then especially a lot of the books has, has a lot of like real places in there right. that, you know, my friends actually own. So um, I was like, oh my God, what a good idea for a reality show. And obviously, you know, it took a bit because it's never been done before. Right. Um, and, you know, 
Hollywood is still a business. It's when it's never been done, people are scared to take a risk. Yeah. But because Crazy Rich Asian did so well, it opened you know, up the door. It for opened a lot up of- the door for us, and you know, we're hoping that you know, Bling Empire, uh, you know, open other doors for other all Asian cast like reality show or all, oh, sorry, all Asian cast like yeah. shows or yeah. movies. How how different is it working in the Netflix world compared to movie and TV world? Netflix is really crazy because the reach it has. You know, mm-hmm. our show came out during COVID, so we couldn't yeah. really go out. But then once I was able to like travel around, like doesn't matter if you're in Mexico, Europe, Asia, yeah. like the fan base is just like everywhere, yeah. you know? And um so it's 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 very unbelievable and amazing that, you know, because when I did when I did a show season one, I really didn't think like I would make an impact on anybody or or share by sharing my story. But you know, when I start traveling and actually meet fans from all over the world, you know, and then some of the stories they tell me, it's very touching. Nice. Um, I feel like it was the perfect time when it actually released because when we're stuck in the pandemic, yeah. We're not going anywhere. So yeah. when we watch this and you guys are going everywhere, we're like, wait, are they still <laughs> We're living this? through you. <laughs> like, oh, wait, there's not COVID right now? Or is there? And like, it was just really cool to see you guys go out. And so everyone was living in, you know, watching you guys in, in your shoes and stuff. Yeah. So. it was. We were really lucky because we wrapped production before COVID. We filmed, Paris was actually filmed the end of 2018. Oh, wow. And then rest of it was 2019, and then it didn't come out till 2021, January. Oh, I see. Wow. Oh, that's a yeah. long time of filming. So that whole time that you were waiting for it to release, like, how was that for you? I didn't really think about it. Like, what? So you just ended filming, and you just put it to the side of the table? And yeah, was I was like, busy doing other stuff, and I just didn't really think about it anymore. Because I had other did, projects to go that, that, you know, happened. Then how did it happen, like, three years later or two years later? Uh, you know, because I, I think... Netflix also another thing is that the editing is a little bit longer than okay. other networks because we so we do three month editing and we'll do three month dubbing afterwards because we oh, dub wow. all of our voices into Spanish, French, and wow. oh that's so crazy. Yeah. So it's actually really funny. There's uh, this French lady who came up to me once and she was like talking to me in French and I was like, huh? And I like, just looked at her <laughs> and then we both I think clicked the same time like. Oh, the version of you on my television spoke French, but not the real life version <laughs> that's of you. So funny. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And then so are you pretty much just reading a paper in every language? No, no, no. Well, you have me. someone else speaking. Oh, somebody else. Someone else subtitles, yeah, yeah. right? Someone yeah. else. Oh. Yeah. The person that uh, was my, I think, French and Spanish uh, voice actually reached out to me on Instagram. Oh, that's I was actually, so like, I'm your funny. voice for you know How Spanish. Cool. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty dope. Yeah. So I think the I think the ver- the 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 French version of me uh, does the voiceover for Lucy Liu as well. That's so funny. Do that's they so sound cool. like you? Do I don't they find people? That's. A- <laughs> I've actually never watched it. That's so interesting. You'd be like, what am I saying right now? <laughs> yeah. The things we would never know. Yeah. Um, the secrets of Netflix and Kelly being on Bling Empire. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Love and Rise podcast with Kelly. We learned a lot about the Netflix world and the Bling Empire. Um, next, we're going to talk a lot about the drama on the show, her relationships. Okay. She just had a baby and... There's a lot going on. I want to get to that. So you guys got to tune in to the next episode. So make sure you subscribe to Love and Rice on Spotify, all podcast platforms, Apple, Google, Amazon, uh, iHeartRadio, CastBox, and YouTube. So we'll see you guys next time.